Let's give a great rousing final speaker of the day, Silicon Prairie News. Welcome, Mr. Ben Silverman. Um, so first, thanks for having me, guys. Like, um, when Jeff called me up and told me about what was going on, I was so excited, actually. Um, you know, I, I went to Roosevelt High School. Uh, last time I was in this room, I was like watching my little sister's orchestra concert. Like, every time I come back home, like downtown Des Moines, like looks totally different. And to be able to come to an event where Jeff and his team is trying to encourage entrepreneurship is really, really cool. And I actually also think it's super important. People fall in love with the internet and they get so excited isn't because you can move to California and make a fortune. The promise of technology is this idea that no matter where you are, where you come from, what you've done, your impact can be magnified all over the world. And that means that it shouldn't matter where you live or who you know or how close you are to venture capital, you should be able to make a really big impact. And I think that anyone who's found their passion in life can usually turn to a teacher or a friend who encouraged them really early on. And that encouragement for entrepreneurs often comes a little bit later. And I think that Think I was trying to provide that encouragement for people that want to do it right here. And so I'm really psyched about it. And I'm really psyched about what Think I was doing. Uh, and I'm really happy to be here. So thanks a lot. The, the second reason I'm really excited is actually a little bit more selfish. Um, we launched Pinterest March last year, a year and a half out, and it was a very quiet launch. It was like stealth without us trying to be stealth. Like we were telling, but like nobody would listen. And I remember, <laughs> like, I remember emailing all my friends. I was living in California at the time. All my friends who worked at Google, all these guys that worked at Facebook, sending out these emails and watching what was going to come back. And the very first people who seemed like they got the site, like the people that were willing to forgive the bugs, forgive the fact that it wasn't perfect, actually were from Des Moines. They were from my hometown, and then Minneapolis, and then Houston and Chicago. And I can't say that it was planned, I don't know why, but it just made me really happy. I was really excited about it. And so thanks to you guys, because I can sincerely say that to this day, um, the Midwest, and Iowa in particular, is disproportionately represented given its population amongst our user base, and that's super cool. So to get started, you know, for those people who haven't used Pinterest, Pinterest is an online pin board to organize and share what inspires you. And at the same time, Pinterest is a place to discover new things handpicked by other people. It was built on a really, really simple premise, and today I'm going to talk about how we thought about it and the things that I think Pinterest is now and think there's things I hope it can be in the future. But for those who haven't used it, it was based on the idea that if people like collecting things, right, if they like putting things up and seeing them visually and showing them to their friends, and if they found that to be valuable in their offline world, like why wouldn't they find that to be valuable in their online world? And the reason that we call it Pinterest was actually a name that my then fiance, now wife came up with was because the idea was you could pin up things that you were interested in and you could show them off to the world and you could get appreciated by people who thought you had really awesome taste. So that's the idea of the website. And I flew in last night, and I was trying to think, like, what am I going to talk about? Right? Like, I'm literally like, over Chicago, landing in O'Hare. It was like 3 or 4 in the morning. I'm like, man, like, what am I going to talk about? And I thought that the right place to start for me was actually before Pinterest, because I think unlike a lot of people, I wasn't like this born ready to be entrepreneur. It took a lot of coaxing and a lot of encouragement. And so my path was actually like totally crazy, right? It was fraught with insecurity and nervousness about whether I was the right person to do it. And the irony is that as a kid, I always idolized entrepreneurs, right? I thought they were the coolest people, but I thought they were cool people in the way that I thought basketballs were cool people, like basketball players. Like, it's cool that some people can get paid to dunk basketballs, but like, I'm not one of those people. And I always sort of just counted myself out of that entire group. I thought of these people as super confident, super visionary. But I thought that my path was just to study really hard, get good grades, get into the right college, get a good paying job, 
provide for a family, really basic things that I could be proud of, but I wasn't going to be the kind of person to take a really big risk. And that was a big thing for me. So even during college, you know, I pursued that interest in building products all the time. The very first product me and a friend built was a product that let you see what your glasses would look like if you were to buy them online. So you used your webcam and it showed you what your glasses look like. And it was very personal for me because both my parents are ophthalmologists. They have a family practice in town. I thought that was really cool. But when interview time came for jobs, I was like, well, it's time to set that aside. It's time to get a real job. And I put on my first suit to this day, one of my only suits. I printed out my resume. I went to interviews. And six months later, I find myself every day like doing things like this, right? Just making really big spreadsheets and big price models and then delivering it to people that were much more successful than I was as if I had some sort of authority. And I really enjoyed it. It was interesting and people were really smart. But I remember there was this moment where they'd flown me out to meet a client at a consulting firm. And this is a guy who's run IT operations at a really, really big company. And he's just trying to be friendly. Right? He's just trying to be a nice guy. And he's like, so you know, what are you passionate about? Like, why, why are you making charts? Like, you're a 21-year-old guy. <laughs> and it didn't sit down with me for a while. Like, it kind of sat with me. And I thought about it, kind of like, what business am I in? Am I in the business of like taking other people's numbers, representing those numbers, and then presenting them to people that know more than me as if I know more than them? And it just didn't feel like what I wanted to do. And so at the same time, I had been reading all the stuff that was going on in the Web2 stuff in Silicon Valley. Right? So I was reading about Dig. And I just thought, look, I don't have a startup idea now, but I just want to be part of that story. I felt like it was the story of my time. I wanted to be in California. I wanted to be closer to it and to people that I thought could inspire me to maybe do that on my own. So I moved out to California. I got a job at Google. Um, and my job at Google actually wasn't that different from my job in this consulting firm. I was still like crunching lots of numbers and making charts and trying to be helpful in that way. But what was different was that the people that I was surrounded with were really passionate about technology and they thought really big. Right? Everyone I worked with thought at global scale. And Google has the fortune to do that because they have really high gross margins. They have this machine that spits out money and they can take some of that money and take pictures of like every street in America. And even though that wasn't like realistic for me as an entrepreneur, it was really inspiring. It was really cool. One thing that's special about Silicon Valley is that people talk about technology in Silicon Valley like they talk about sports in Iowa. Literally, if you go to a bar and people are drinking, they're more likely to be talking about a new cell phone or a new website or a new service than they are to be talking about you know, who won the Iowa-Iowa State game. And that environment is really weird. It's like being in politics in Washington, D.C. It's like being in finance in New York. You're literally inundated it. So this is a picture I took. We walked over to Steve Jobs' house after he passed away. Um, this is another image outside of the Palo Alto Apple store. The entire front like, was covered with sticky notes. People live and breathe it in a way that was really inspiring to me. And after two years at Google and being surrounded by people for whom quitting their job and taking a shot at something and maybe failing and trying again was the norm, that was when I finally sort of had the courage to cut ties and jump out right in the middle of 2008, like right before the financial crisis hit <laughs> with, with no real plan. And that's, that's the story of how the company got started. So I'm not going to go through kind of, there was this long ramp up period that people often like to hear like the struggling parts, but it was actually, it wasn't interesting. It was just kind of sad and just like, <laughs> like there's no, there's no drama or story. It's just like me and my friend Paul just like running around, like sitting in coffee shops and like not getting anything done. But what I did want to talk about at this point was I wanted to talk about the three or four things that first got us started to building Pinterest and the three or four things that are continuing to be kind of inspirational as we move forward. Like what we think that Pinterest can be if we work really hard on it and if we execute really well and if we're a little bit lucky. And the first thing, oh, this was a quote. This is awesome. Have you guys heard of Jessica Hitch? Jessica Hitch is this amazing typographer out of Brooklyn. She did this interview and she made this, had this quote that like has always stuck in my mind. So like the work you do while you're procrastinating is probably the work you should do for the rest of your life. It's like, that makes a lot of sense. Like as long as procrastinating is not like just like sitting on the couch and watching TV, which like isn't work at all, like that's really cool. I just remember thinking about it when I was like going home from work and trying to build products. Um, so anyway, 
the first thing is that Pinterest is a place to collect and share your inspirations, right? The very first thing that we thought about with Pinterest was, like, what is it about collecting that compels everyone as a kid to do it? So when I was a kid, I was in West Des Moines, and I loved insects. Like, I collected, like, insects, like, maniacally. I was totally obsessed with it. I thought it was really cool, and I was doing, like, this really important, like, service. And what you do with these things is you, you pin them up to these boards, and you write down the descriptions, and then you show them off to your, like, one friend. Uh, who's like, wow, like that's, that's really cool. Um, but I was fascinated by the fact that like, so many people I know had some idea of collecting things, right? People collect baseball cards, people collect stamps, and it doesn't have to be like this standalone hobby, right? The, the books on your bookshelf, like those are a collection that say something really important about who you are. So November 20th, 2009, me, my friend Paul, who I went to college with, and my friend Evan, who was at the time in grad school in architecture, set out and we said, look, what if we put collections online? Like, what would that look like and why would that be cool? And this was the first version of Pinterest, right? It was like terrible looking, right? And Evan, who has led up the design, he's responsible for why the Pinterest is as beautiful as it was today, said something that I'll always remember. He said, you know, Ben, like, if this view of the website doesn't work, right, this one view, the rest of it doesn't matter. Right? If the collection doesn't inspire people to want to put it up because it makes them feel better about who they are, it represents a side of themselves that's interesting and they're proud of, he's like, we can just forget the rest. And so the three of us, and Evan in particular, just worked on this screen for two and a half months. 50 fully coded versions, just the screen. No backend, no login, no image uploader, just this screen, right? Until we felt like, wow, this is something that we think people will respond to. And that's the very beginning of how we built it. So that was the very first thing. And a lot of Pinterest changes literally every day. But I thought there was a lot of wisdom in what Evan said, which was figure out the one thing, the first thing in your site, in your product, in your service, that the rest of it completely depends on, and pour all of your efforts, all of your efforts into that at the exclusion of everything else. I thought it was a really, a really important lesson that to me always really stuck with me. So we build Pinterest, like this is how the grid ends up looking, and we launch it, and it's a really slow launch, as I said. Like very few people are using it, but slowly we start to get items trickling in. I remember our biggest fear was that we would never have content on the site, right? Our fear was like we would build this beautiful repository for content and there wouldn't be anything. And what really surprised us and what really inspired us very early on was that people kept thinking of ways to use the service that we had never thought of. So this was like the first collection I ever created. I just started putting all the t-shirts that I ever wanted to get, right? Not surprisingly, like shortly thereafter, there was this crazy Star Wars board, right? People just collected crazy Star Wars stuff that they had never seen before. Um, and then we started seeing really interesting things. This is a woman that travels from city to city and she creates these beautiful tour guides of everywhere she goes. And I think that it was when we started seeing people use the service for things that we never expected that we realized that maybe we were onto something really interesting. Like maybe there was something really special about the idea of connecting people based upon these individual atoms, these individual items that represented something real in the real world. Right? We always wanted Pinterest to feel like it was a real thing. Right? When you saw a shirt, it's a shirt that you could go buy. When you saw a place, it was a place that you could travel to. Because we thought that if you could connect people based upon those real individual items, you'd be able to connect people in the same way that you felt like when you showed your friend's bug collection or when you go to your buddy's house and you look at that bookshelf and say, hey, I've read that book. We thought that if we could put people at the center of the experience, it might be a service that would have a chance to grow into something bigger than it was at the time. Collections, we thought, celebrate personal passions. They celebrate this side of yourself that sometimes is really hard to share with other people. Like most people aren't writers, so blogging doesn't make a lot of sense. Most people aren't photographers, so going into Flickr doesn't make a lot of sense. Most people aren't that witty, so being on Twitter like, isn't that helpful of an experience. But almost everyone is proud of some aspect of their life, whether it's the furniture in their house, whether it's the clothes they wear every day. And we wanted to build a site that celebrated that. And that's the very first thing that we wanted to do. And that's something that I think we're still striving to do as a really small team and trying to get right. So number two, right? Pinterest is a place to discover new things handpicked by people. When I was working at Google, the specific projects I was working on were display advertisements. Right? So display advertisements in internet talk are just the image ads 
and they're supposed to help you discover stuff you didn't know about. If you know what you want, you just type it into Google, like this ad shows up, shows you an ad. But if you don't know what you want, a display advertisement is supposed to help you find it. So this is like the best of the best in the world of discovery right now. Right? You're on Yahoo, you're looking at sports, and Groupon in the corner is like, hey, you want a deal? And we felt like there was something really hollow and empty about that. Like not only is it impersonal and not like a human experience, it's also just terrible. Like I wasn't there to see that ad, I was there to do something else. And it really paled next to all the other interfaces that you have for discovery in the physical world, right? So this is a fancy grocery store in San Francisco. It's absolutely beautiful, overpriced, all organic. Everything's grown with like one mile of that grocery store. But walking in there is like a human experience. You can ask someone, what fruit should I get? You can interact with the items. And that's something that's really exciting to us. Right? This is a bookstore right near our office. And walking into a bookstore is a human discovery experience. Right? It feels totally different than seeing a banner ad or getting something shoved to you in your email. It feels like something that you're immersed in. And we loved that feeling. Right? This is the MoMA in New York. Right? You walk in, you see something beautiful. And for us, we want Pinterest someday to feel like the best discovery experience that you can have on any device, online, anytime. And so it was really exciting for us last week, the Smithsonian American Archives of Art, they started uploading their collections because they wanted people to take the items, add them to themselves, and share them with their friends in a personal way. So discovery was the second premise of the business, and that's something, again, that's at the core of it. Those are the two pillars of Pinterest. Let's let people express themselves in a way that's true and authentic to who they are. Let's let people discover things not through any other means than through their friends and through people. And I think that from a business standpoint, brands have become really excited about the opportunity to be part of that story. I think brands and companies at their best, they do a really good job. They have a relationship as if they're your friend, right? as if they're personal. Right? So when you were late 90s, early 2000s, if you were really good, right, you could build a website that looked like a company's website. Right? And now companies get so excited if they can build a profile that looks like their Facebook profile. And that's because people have a lot of options and they want to interact with things on a very personal level. And that was the second idea behind Pinterest. Helping someone discover things that they love, we think of as a gift. We think of it as something that people will find meaning in. And we think that if we can make that experience translate into a digital form, people will enjoy it, it will have lasting value. The third, and this was the most recent thing that we learned, something that, again, we didn't really expect when we launched it. We think Pinterest is a community of people who inspire each other. On Pinterest, everyone notices the images. Right? There are images everywhere. Like That's the first thing that people talk about, and that's the first thing they remember. But if you look at Pinterest, there are also comments, and there are also faces, and we think that that's really valuable. We started doing meetups really, really early on in the service. We did the first one in San Francisco. We did one in LA. And there was something really magic about bringing people together that had never met because they felt like they knew each other. Right? They would talk about, oh, how's that gardening project that you've been working on? Right? How's that book that you're reading? Did you ever buy that purse that you were lusting after? And even though it might sound like silly or trite that these are these little atoms of commonality, these people formed real relationships. People have met their girlfriends on Pinterest. We hired our first community manager at a meetup where we met her. Right? These are relationships that are real, and they're relationships that are very, very hard to form anywhere else online, and we're really passionate about doing our best to help form those relationships. This was another example that we really liked. This is a woman who lives in rural New Zealand. Her name is Christy. Every single day, she like, lives in a pretty rural area. She finds a project on Pinterest, she does it, and she blogs about it. Right? 365 days a year. Every single day she does it. And the idea that we could provide a platform where people could connect and inspire each other to get away from the computer, right, to do something offline, to us is really, really exciting. I think that the services that I admire the most online are not the services that cut you off from the outside world. They're not Farmville, they're not Angry Birds. Right? They're services that make you feel closer to the world around you. And part of the mission of Pinterest is actually to get you off the site and inspire you to do things that you otherwise wouldn't have the confidence to do. And the very last thing that we wanted to close with was the idea that Pinterest is a startup. Right? Pinterest is a company. It's my first company that's ever grown to any size. It's nine people. And we're trying to build a group of people who are as passionate about executing on the first three parts of our vision as we are. You know, we have a really small team, and they're super scrappy. Right? This is a team that like, saw us through times when we had no money, when no one used the service, when the service couldn't scale. But all of them are really, really excited 
about working every day. This is Justin, hired him straight out of Carnegie Mellon. He's working in our first office and you can't tell how small the office is because there was nowhere in the office that you could stand to like capture it in a wide angle enough way. Like we had seven people in a tiny living room and we had two guys living in the bedrooms, only one of whom worked at the company, right? It was like a total disaster. And the crew that we put together like has never batted an eye, right? They've never for once questioned whether this is what they should be doing. And I personally take a lot of inspiration from working with them. This is a poster that's on the wall. It was actually taken from Facebook. It's kind of the company motto and it's move fast and break things. Right? The only advantage we have, we're nine people. Like, like Facebook has like nine engineers like devoted to every single thing on the site. Right? The only advantage we have is if we can move really quickly. And we try to take the ethos that it's okay to make mistakes, just break it, fix it, learn from the mistake and move on. This is the whole team, group chat, have to have one. And so I guess like to just to end kind of where we started, like I had this vision of entrepreneurs as these like solitary geniuses, right? Like this guy like sitting in a dark room. And I guess some of them are, um, but I'm definitely not. Um, and what I would say is that the thing that I found most inspirational in my kind of journey from trying to get the courage to do a startup to trying different products that didn't work to finally having a product that some people like is working with people that inspire me, whether they're the people on our team or the people in the community. And so that's again why I'm just really excited about what Think is doing. So that's it, and uh, let me answer any questions. Yeah, question. If, um, we have a few minutes if there, if anyone has questions for Ben. We've got uh, we got a few minutes. We can take some some Q and A. So we have the microphones on the aisles, and we have our first question. What's your guys' business model? Like, how do you make money from that? That's a good question. <laughs> no, so we can't disclose kind of the specific plans yet, um, but I guess we feel that if we build a place that people go and trust. Right. If they go there first to discover things, we think that has a lot of value. When we were first trying to explain Pinterest to people that had a hard time getting their head around it, we used to say, imagine you got a catalog and when you opened it, you felt like it was handmade for you. Right? Because every single item was picked by someone you care about and if you were interested in that item, you could find more information about it or you could find other items that that same person felt were really cool. And that's sort of one of the guiding kind of emotional goals that the whole design team operates towards. Like what if you could build something that, that felt like it was handmade and hand constructed just for your consumption? And I think if we do that, there's going to be a big business opportunity there. Well, thanks for coming back home, Ben. Um, one of the questions I have is you're obviously out in the valley and you've got the valley ecosystem there. If you can cast your mind back here to the Midwest, do you think you could do the same thing with the same group of, as you said, amazing people as you've done with Pinterest out there? So the honest answer is I have no idea. I mean, I, I moved out of Iowa in 1999. Right? Like, it took a very different set of resources to build something meaningful in 1999. But what I can say is that up until early this year, there were three of us working on a product that got pretty big. And I guarantee that there are three passionate people in Des Moines that are committed enough to build something really meaningful. So I don't know those people and I don't live there right now and I can't, I can't say that, but um, I just have to believe that the people are here and if the people are here, then I think it can be done. Thank you. You, uh, you talked about spending three months on the front page, just designing it, coming up with something that you all thought was cool, which seems counterintuitive to some of the discussions that we had earlier about going to the marketplace and asking the marketplace what their feedback is. Could you talk a little bit about the idea of sticking with what you believe is cool as opposed to vetting out the marketplace first? Sure. Um, you know, I think that the quality of feedback that people give you on anything 
is directly proportional to the quality of product that you give to them. Right? You give someone something that's like sketched out with a marker on paper, like log in up here and like some stuff over there, you'll get exactly the same quality of feedback. Like, looks pretty good. I like where you put the login page. Um, <laughs> you know, for us, for us, you know, we had a very specific, and Evan had a very specific idea of what that grid layout should look like and feel like. And I think there's certain times when you have to trust that you're executing on a vision that you can get better at and more efficiently get better at by working alone. And there are other times when you just have to get data. You just have to get data. You'd be, you'd be foolish not to. Um, and we're actually making a lot of those transitions right now as a company because the site has gotten just a little bit too big for us to be able to instinctively empathize with how all the users are feeling. So we rely on data more and more to make a lot of decisions. Oh, sorry. Hi, Ben. How are you? Good. Uh, I, dr I drive by uh, Roosevelt High School every day, and I'm wondering, my question is, can we build a statue to you? Possibly. <laughs> Bronze, and then my second question is, what would your pose be? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> There's like, um, it's really funny, like, uh, somebody asked me before, they're like, oh, do you speak all the time? And I was like, actually, no, I never speak. Like, no one really gives a shit what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, and I remember I, uh, we had just printed these t-shirts. This is like seven months ago. And they had our logo. And this other startup had really cool t-shirts. So I asked where his t-shirts came from. And he gave me the same guy. And I was kind of waiting for someone to be like, oh, man, like, I've heard of that website. Like someone I didn't know. Like not someone I, I was like sitting next to, like I was working with. And it had been like months. Right? And I'm wearing this shirt like three, four days a week. Right? <laughs> and I had pulled, I think, basically an all-nighter, and I'm walking to get coffee. It's like 7 in the morning. And this guy walks up to me, and he's like, do you work there? And I was like, yes, I work there. <laughs> and he's like, do you know Rich? And I'm like, no. And I look down, and it's like the other startup's t-shirt. <laughs> and he must have thought I was such a jerk, because I'm like, oh, yeah, I work there. And then when he names, like, the one guy that works there, I'm like, oh, no, never mind. Like, <laughs> like just kidding. I, I just say that to everyone. So. Yes. All right, thanks, Ben. Great talk, and it's a great product. I really like it. Um, I'm curious. So you have a great product. Uh, you have lots of users. It continues to grow. What does your team do? You know, you, you show up to work on a daily basis. How do you continue to, to make the product better, and how do you use the data, or learn from your users, like what's, what's next, I guess? Yeah, um, so there's so much that we want to do, actually. Um, I guess the reason that I wanted to talk about the three or four things that we think Pinterest can be someday is we have really like high hopes for the site. And I don't know if we'll get there at all, but I think that it, it can be something kind of beautiful and something that is one of the services that people depend on to enrich their lives. And there's like an infinite number of features that we want to build to make better. And they range from making the site faster, making search better, like just blocking and tackling, like making sure it never goes down, making it work on all devices, tablets and phones, to other things that are a lot more aspirational that I don't even know how to begin to do, but I know that if we could do them, uh, it would be really cool. So the team spends all of its time thinking about how to make the product better and trying to build it. And more and more, I've been trying to my, spend my time trying to find more great people to join um, because I think that's the most leveraged use of my time that I can put in to achieving that goal. Thank you. Cool. Uh, quick question. How do you keep your coworkers motivated, especially in the early stages of development? You know, I think that, uh, I mean, there are two things. I mean, people have to be excited about building things. They almost have to be intrinsically biased towards wanting things to succeed. Um, I don't come across as a competitive person, but I actually think people being competitive is often a really good trait in people starting companies because you're fighting an uphill battle for a really long time. And then on the flip side, I think it's really, really important to celebrate 
everything, right? Like, like we had a thousand pins, like you should celebrate. Right? Sight didn't go down tonight, like let's celebrate. You know? um, because, I don't know, in those early days, like the team, like, those are the people that have your back, right? Those are the people that can be happy for you without kind of being obligatorily happy to you. And I think that sometimes if you're super heads down, you can forget to do that. It's something I've been guilty of. Um, and I always try, I'm always trying to get better at. Perfect, thanks. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for creating such a wonderful product. Um, I personally use Pinterest all the time. I'm a designer by trait. I use it for inspiration a lot. Um, I love the fact that it is something that's worth, it's not like Google where you get everybody's photos and you have to weed through it and there's maybe one of 200 that's worth seeing. I love that everything, someone has, someone has liked it enough that they've repinned it. Do you have a fear of it being so big that you don't have um, I guess the, the selective group is, do you understand what I'm trying to say, I guess? Yeah, like if quality will fall. Yes, out. yeah. Sure. Um, I don't think of quality as like an objective thing. I think of it as relevance to you, right? So I really believe like taste is very personal and you know, I might think that like those are terrible looking cupcakes and you might think those are the best looking cupcakes there have ever been and that's totally fine. I think our job as a service is to put the people who admire each other's taste or who are interested in the same things in contact with each other rather than trying to control quality externally. Thank you. Cool. cool. Well, thanks again, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.